Hi all, uh, we've got David Horn's chat. Number two, let's see how many we do. Um, I get asked many times um, how to plan a training program. Obviously I've done quite a lot of different strength sports, um, but the fundamentals are still pretty similar. Um, also, one of the main things, get a training book. This is my 53rd from 1980 right to now. Um, it's it, not only perfect for now, but you can look back on previous training programs and see what worked well for certain feats, certain contests. So uh, you need goals. Um, it's no use just training. Training is great. Look, it's even you know, some training is better than nothing, but a goals will really push your training far higher. Um, so I, I like to have uh, short-term goals, 12 to 16 weeks. So that's what I usually run it to a, uh, a contest or a feat of strength, or even just that that is the 12th or 16th week and that's it. And I'll rethink about maybe what I want to move on and it might even adapt just to only a little small amount and then the next 12 or 16 weeks will be accordingly. A long-term goal is really a year. Anything beyond that is, is um, it's impossible for you to know what's going to occur. Are you going to get ill? There's a million things. Um, the specifics, um, I've got some notes down here. Uh, as with goals for whatever the training, the, the training has to be specific to the task. Uh, and in fact, it can be very specific and I, I would advise that. Um, not just I'll get my hands stronger for this grip competition that's coming up. You actually need to be technically perfect and strong on each individual event. Uh, or in arm wrestling, you have got a, uh, a particular style of contest coming up, whether it be a super match, sit down, stand up, or a, a open competition. They're all slightly different, so they all bring some, something slightly different. So it's best to have trained on these things and they don't become some massive, um, uh, something that you're unaware of at the time. Um, the components of what you tr will write out your training program. So the main specifics are uh, for that contest or the, the feat that you're going to do, they have to be in that training program. That can be like the pinch lift is the um, Saxon bar or the Euro pinch or the gripper. So you have to train on these things, not something miles away different, something is as, as, as exact as you can make it, okay? Um, look at the muscle groups that are gonna be involved in whatever you're gonna do. Whatever, strongman, arm wrestling, grip, uh, anything. Look at the muscles that are gonna be worked. You're gonna train those things. So if you're working your legs, your squats, your deadlifts, if you're gonna be working your arms, biceps, lats, you know, for your arm wrestling, hands, wrists, etc. It's pretty obvious. Um, so these need to be trained. And then finally in your training program, it's niggles. Any niggles or even previous niggles, you will put in pre prehab uh, exercises and rehab exercises. Uh, this is very useful for keeping those injuries you have cleared away and also anything you've just been picked up. It is really easy to pick up little niggles. Uh, it's just like it's like just a touch too much training or an accumulation of your training has now just given you a little niggle. And so you just need these prehab and rehab exercises constantly, always to clear. They're the kind of areas I would put in as your program. Um, a component. Rep ranges. Uh, I train on everything really from one rep to a thousand, a hundred reps, maybe a thousand reps. I think I've done some long-term things, but in reality, the, the, the reps are uh, open, um, you know, for lots of different numbers. Um, also depends on the goal. Um, if I've got something that's max lift, um, then the reps can certainly be lower, um, at peaking towards very low towards the end of the contest. I think I even remember like from a two hands pinch lift world record. It was really, it was only the last two weeks I tried single just below the number I was hoping to get. Prior to, certainly right at the beginning, I was doing holds, you know, quite, quite largest holds and bringing the strength up. Um, but I usually don't get too hung up about numbers. Uh, failure is failure. And I, and I much prefer to sort of train uh, to failure, especially for things like steel bending and arm wrestling. I keep the reps 
always higher, 20 plus reps, because they have a real strength endurance theme in them. Um, so it's not like a powerlifting one one squat bench, uh, one squat or one uh, bench or one deadlift. You know, you're doing steel bending or steel snapping especially, uh, or you're doing arm wrestling in a contest, uh, certainly a super match or even the, the modern war zones they have. You've got to have uh, strength endurance to hopefully have some kind of uh, ability to keep the strength that you start off at the contest to the end. Uh, how often? Uh, how often can you train? Well, ha, 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 how many workouts can you recover from? Everyone's a little bit different. Um, the best bet is to find out how many days you can actually train. Um, you know, I mean, everybody, uh, some people have a, a lot more uh, access to some, some time after work or whatever, and some people have less. Myself, I found that certainly with grip, a long time ago, I remember experimenting on it because I thought uh, manual workers work so hard all the time. I thought, no, I'm going to go. It. So I did six days a week, seven days a week grip, split all the different areas and worked them all. Now I even pushed it. I did two sessions a day and my extra bodybuilding, and I found I could rough cover. But at that particular time, I was working in a gym. So it's, it's that, that was easy and that allowed me to train hard. If you're like laying pipes for 10 hours today, it might be tougher. So you've got to find out how much you can actually train and how much you can recover from. But whatever you can do, split the exercises over that particular week. Um, your training will also, never mind, also depend about how much work you, you have outside and, and also, um, um, you know, um, personal things with wife, kids, etc., uh, hobbies, other hobbies. Uh, it also down to your nutrition. So keep on point with that nutrition. If it, if it's growing in the ground, or you can kill this animal, these are the kind of foods you want. Okay, I won't. We can look at nutrition another day. Um, which exercises first? Well, you have to experiment on yourself. Um, for example, um, I like to do a 10 minute uh, kind of zone uh, steel bend or steel snap before pinch lifting. I find that works really well. It seems to be able to just stimulate enough of that lovely uh, heat in my lower, in my upper limbs to make my hands feel really perfect for the pinch lift. If I come in too cold on the pinch lift, it feels, I, it feels like it's, grasping a piece of ice so that see that's little things like that but you're gonna to have to experiment on yourself to see where to put these things and remember that um so you, you write this out you write it in your training book but it's not written in stone um and it can be changed along the way because you are experiment on yourself this brand new training program that you've just implemented on yourself might you might never have done it before nobody on the planet might have ever done this one before um, so that first two to four weeks is you just getting used to these new exercises, this new program in this format from one exercise to the whatever, the 10th exercise, how it feels. Um, and some adjustments will be done here and there. And then after that, that it's that next 10 weeks is the real growth and strength and speed and endurance or whatever you're, you're training for. And then the peak is hopefully at the end just prior to the competition or at the competition sorry uh, and you know that's how I, I kind of run uh, my training programs and uh, I hope this has helped somewhat and uh, good luck to everyone.